In this video, we will be discussing the difference between hair shedding and hair loss. Now, in general, the human scalp has around 100,000 or a lakh to around 125,000 or 1.25 lakh hair strands on the scalp, depending on the race and ethnicity. The hair usually is in the growth phase or the anagen phase and in the resting or the resolution phase known as the telogen phase. So roughly around 100 or so hair falling off every single day is absolutely natural because subsequently and concurrently there is also hair growth which is happening. So if you experience some amount of hair loss not exceeding 100 hair per day, rest assured it is absolutely normal. So that brings us to the question, what exactly is hair loss? Now hair loss can broadly be divided into two categories. Category 1 is the transient or temporary kind of hair loss and category 2 which is permanent hair loss which subsequently leads to baldness. Uh, temporary hair loss can be due to different causes. So what happens in temporary hair loss is the hair falls in much larger quantities, 300 to 500 per day or sometimes even more and they usually gradually fall off after a certain period of the insulting incident which is causing this hair loss to happen. Now, in anagen phase, which is also known as anagen effluvium, there are certain conditions like chemotherapy, which causes the hair loss to happen. What happens is that the chemotherapy agents, which basically kills off the fast growing cells of the body, like the cancer cells, also affect the hair cells. So all of them, including the anagen phase, hair falls off completely. And once the chemotherapy stops, you actually again grow back the hair with the help of medication and treatment in your clinics. The hair loss that happens transiently in the telogen phase, also known as telogen effluvium, is by far much more common and it happens around three months after the person has undergone a certain incident like childbirth, like pregnancy, like certain kind of deficiencies of minerals like iron and maybe hormonal incidences like hypothyroidism and it can also happen uh, due to some medical conditions like high fever due to surgeries etc so what happens here is that the hair in the telogen or the resting phase they basically fall off suddenly in much more quantity than what they are supposed to fall off so roughly around 300 to 500 hair is falling off every day the person when they're combing the hair, when they're taking a shower, they see the hair loss happening. So in this kind of case, what you need to do is arrest the, the underlying cause. Suppose if someone has got hypothyroidism, get the thyroid levels corrected. If someone's got iron deficiency, vitamin D3 deficiency, you have to get those conditions uh, arrested and as well as concurrently start medication and treatment in various clinics. If it persists for more than six months, you will need to consult a dermatologist or you will need to come to any of the DHA clinics and get the underlying causes sorted and also ensure that you get the proper treatment and care so that you get back whatever hair you have lost. So that brings us to the second category of hair loss which is the permanent hair loss which subsequently leads to balding. So what happens here is certain amount of people who have a genetic predisposition, who have a hereditary cause, it could be either maternal, it could be paternal. So here the DHT or the dihydrotestosterone enzyme affects hair follicles in the mid part the, or the frontal part or even in the crown area and they subsequently lose the hair permanently. However, it is not a sudden hair fall that the person experiences. It is usually gradual in progression. The person first starts thinning the hair from the area affected, which is known as miniaturization. And subsequently, the miniaturized hair falls off, leading to permanent baldness. If the person has balded out completely, if there is absolute baldness in a person's area, there is no way you can get the hair back other than doing a hair transplantation. This kind of hair loss, however, can be arrested by medications, by treatments, including platelet-rich plasma injections, growth factor injections. They can also be arrested by using devices which follow the low-level laser light therapy. So here, you have to use this medication so that the hair loss is arrested and you do not undergo further hair loss. So the treatment here has to be started as soon as possible. 
the faster you start using the treatment the better it is so with medication with the treatment you arrest the hair loss however if you have lost hair suppose in the front part or up to even in the mid part you still have a chance of getting back the absolute density in the most natural way by undergoing a treatment of hair transplant at any of the DHI clinics however if you come at a very later stage like grade 6 or grade 7 when you have lost the entire area there still is hope if your donor permits it can be possible to get back the absolute coverage right from the front to the back with a very very good density which gives you back the look you had in your teenage or in your early 20s however like i said it is dependent on your donor if your donor is average it is possible to do the hair transplant in two stages in the first part you cover the front and the mid part and in the second session you can always come back after six months to a year and cover the back portion of the hair so that you get an absolutely natural density and coverage so now you may ask which is the best time to undergo a hair transplant do you do it in the initial stages of pattern hair loss be it androgenetic alopecia or female pattern hair loss when you have lost some amount of hair and you still have a good mop of hair in the scalp or do you wait for the advanced stages where you have lost considerable hair you've got entirely bald in the front and in the mid portion do you do it then so let's look at it this way you know prevention is better than cure the sooner you do the better it is and the better results you get suppose you've lost just the corner of your your hairline and the hairline is receded slightly upwards you can with a very little amount of hair cover this entire area get your complete natural hairline back and you can also prevent further hair loss from the rest of the area what happens here is suppose you have undergone a hair transplant so subconsciously at the back of your mind you will have this you know i have invested in going a hair transplant and i will have to ensure with medication with treatments in the clinic that i take care of the existing hair and if you wait for the advanced stages to set in where you have lost a considerable amount of hair a you will need a lot of hair with a considerably higher amount of investment to get the hair back and b sometimes it might not even be possible to cover the entire scalp region so that is why the sooner it is the better it is